Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mafesto and our journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the third round of the 1960 season, the Indianapolis 500. It was held on the 30th of May, it had 62 entries, 33 of them took part in the race and there were 17 retirements. The race consisted of 200 laps completed in 3 hours, 36 minutes and 11 seconds. Eddie Sachs started the race from pole with Jim Raffman in second, Roger Ward in third, Dick Raffman fourth, Len Sutton in fifth and Troy Rutman started from sixth. Jim Raffman drove brilliantly to win the Indy 500, Roger Ward finished in second 12.75 seconds later, Paul Goldsmith crossed the line in third, he was 3 minutes 7.3 seconds down, Don Braston took the fourth spot, he was 3 minutes 7.98 seconds down, Johnny Thompson ended up in fifth, 3 minutes 11.35 seconds behind, and rounding off the top six was Eddie Johnson, he was 4 minutes 10.6 seconds behind. The fastest lap of the race was a 1 minute 1.59 second lap, and it was posted by Jim Raffman. We're here at the famous Indianapolis Oval where a lap starts off with a short run down into turn 1, a banked 90 degree left hand corner. Turn 2 is next, a banked 90 degree left hand corner. That brings us onto the back straight, at the end of which we have a banked 90 degree left hand corner. And finally we come into turn 4, a banked 90 degree left hand corner. <laughs> This brings us around onto the main straight and that is a lap around the Indianapolis Speedway. <laughs> Man, I'm dumb. And here we are in qualifying for the Indianapolis 500, coming around to set our first qualifying lap, a 1.06.42. Not a very bad uh, qualifying time, to be honest. Uh, later on, I managed to improve a little bit, a 1.06.4. That's only 200 of a second, so not all that good. But eventually I managed to put a 104.275, and I believe that's the fastest lap of the session for me, which actually puts us on pole for the race. Hopefully that will, will stay as is. And here are the previous Indianapolis 500 winners. We won quite a few of them, including the very first Indianapolis 500 as part of the uh, Formula 1 World Championship. And indeed, we start from Paul with Bruce McLaren in second, Jack Brabham third, Olivia Gendebian fourth, fifth is Tony Brooks, and Lucien Bianchi rounding off the top six. Henry Taylor is seventh, eighth is John Surtees, ninth is Innes Ireland, followed by Graham Hill in tenth. In 11th we have Wolfgang von Trips, 12th is Chuck Day, 13th Phil Hill, Richie, Gin Richie Ginther found himself in 14th, 15th is Cliff Allison, 16th Willie May Rees, 16th, 17th Sterling Moss, 18th Jim Clark, 19th is Maurice Trintignant, 20th Ronald Flockhart, Joe Bonnier 21st and Dan Gurney bringing up the rear in 22nd. So that's the grid lineup for the Indianapolis 500. Once again, we're starting from pole. This is the final Indianapolis 500. We will no longer be returning to this race after this. So better make it a good one. So hopefully things will go well. Unfortunately, they are not the again the accelerate acceleration of this. Aston Martin is absolutely horrible and we pay the price we drop down to 10th almost immediately and that's not 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 very good considering that we started from pole so that was a pretty much a blundered start for us and but yeah anyway I'm tr now I'm trying to maybe catch up to Gendebian here and pass uh, go for a pass and indeed I managed to get around him so we move back up into ninth and hopefully systematically I'll be able to catch everyone else but we now have another look at the replay again a very very slow start on my end but the car just doesn't want to uh, accelerate really really quickly so that's there's not much I could have done about that unfortunately so I was pretty much left at the mercy of my car there but anyway, we are now coming around to finish lap 1 and start lap 2. We have Graham Hill in front of us, just half a second ahead. And hopefully we will be able to close in the gap. However, it does seem that at the moment he is pulling away. 
We now move on to lap 3 and we are... Uh, I'm trying to fight Lucien Bianchi. However, Richie Ginther in the Ferrari there managed to slip past me and we fall back down to 10th. So, that's not very good. We just started lap 4 now and Phil Hill goes for the pass as well on the inside there and we drop down to 11th. Not... The Ferraris are really, really quick. I don't, I, I really don't have anything I can do about that, unfortunately. Later on, on lap four, and William A. Rees managed to catch us, and he also passes us. So we drop down to 12th. Cliff Allison is also having a look, and eventually we do fall in, down into 13th on lap five here. So we're losing positions really, really quickly. I uh, Allison kind of blunders the entrance into uh, turn two there, but he even does manage to keep his position. We now move on to lap six, and I finally get a break, a break, and manage to fight Lucien Bianchi as we come to turn two here. We're side by side, uh, but eventually I manage to pull through. My car is much much faster than his, so that shouldn't have been too much of a problem. Lap seven here. And we are just behind Tony Brooks. Pull to the left here and try to pass him. And we've done it. So we move up into 11th. Not very good, but we are making small progress. Hopefully, event hopefully we'll be able to eventually catch everyone else. However, on lap 9, Jim Clark caught up to us and we dropped back down to 12th. He kind of messes up coming in into turn two but keeps his position I wasn't able to really catch him towards the end of lap nine Maurice Trintignan also ca caught up to me and also passed me so we're now down in 13th not doing very good in this race lap 10 and Ronald Flockhart manages to pass us as well so we are now 14th we're losing positions very very quickly here guys I'm, I'm not too happy about this but Unfortunately, there's not much I can do. Lap 11 and Sterling Moss manages to overtake me as well. I don't know how, but most of these guys are very, very quick. Much quicker than I am. And that's not very comforting. Lap 12 here and Joe Bonnier overtakes me. However, I managed to slip right past him again. Uh, at least momentarily, momentarily. However, he sticks it through turn 2 and eventually passes us so we are now in, down in 16th and then on lap 13th Dan Gurney also managed to overtake us however I didn't want I didn't give up just yet however Dan Gurney was much much faster and as we come into turn one you'll see that he did in fact manage to keep his position 17th I then touched the wall there on the outside touch gurney that kind of puts us both off and momentarily I once again move into 16th but coming out of turn 2 gurney manages to keep 16th we are 17th and that's well pretty much it for now on lap 19th we are looking at a replay of the fastest lap of the race uh, posted by Willie May Rees I think it was a one point one, one minute, one point four or five second lap. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out at at the end of the race. And on lap 27, Graham Hill retired. And here is a replay of Graham Hill, and we can see smoke coming out of his car. And well, that's definitely the end of his race. Then on lap 32, we see Phil Hill has some problems, and we managed to slip right past him. So we move up into 15th. And Richie Ginther is also out of the Indianapolis 500 and we see him coming into the pits. I'm not quite sure why he had to come into the pits. Uh, they don't, the AI doesn't have to pit, they are on normal fuel consumption, but whatever. We now move on to lap 36 and as you can see, the sky has gotten much darker and John Surtees is also out of the Indianapolis 500 and we now have a replay of John Surtees we see smoke coming out of his engine as well he pulls to the side and 
unfortunately that's the end of his race so that's that and on lap 40 we are coming into the pits to to well change our tires and get some fuel we are the only ones who will be pitting again the AI is set to normal fuel consumption and normal tire wear so they don't have to come in for fuel or anything like that if they come in they it's going to be for other reasons anyway let's get back into the race and I made kind of a mistake I was kind of second guessing myself there and someone came around and crashed into me I don't know who it was however I know they didn't retire anyway this is a replay of Lucien Bianchi who loses control of his car coming into turn one goes off screen I don't know exactly what happened but he decided to retire on lap 41 I was just left by one of the cars I'm not entirely sure who however Sterling Moss is out of the race now and here he is he's coming into the pistol retire apparently he had a suspension problem so uh, unfortunately that's the end of the race for him we now move on to lap 46 we are in 12th and then Gurney is also out of the Grand Prix now so eventually we'll move up into 11th and here is a replay of Dan Gurney he comes around uh, turn 2 I believe there uh, moves off the track and that's the end of his race apparently he as well had some suspension problem as we now move on to lap 49 Joe Bonnier is one lap Joe Bonnier is one lap ahead of us so we are falling behind as we take a look at a replay of Henry Taylor who loses control of his Yaman Credit racing car and I'm not sure what happened after that because the camera didn't change. We now move on to lap 55 and Ennis Ireland and Jack Brabham are both out of the Indianapolis 500 all of a sudden so uh, here is a replay of Ireland coming into the pits to retire not not sure why but he is out we also saw a Ferrari just passing through the pits for no reason and this is Jack Brabham coming into the pits he did come in with a problem a suspension problem that is so he is those are the next two retirements and on lap 58 Trintignant retired from the race as well and we have a replay of him as he comes around out of uh, turn 3 there, pulls to the side and he is also out of the race. And he also is having some problems with his suspension. Quite a few suspension problems in this race, not entirely sure how. I wouldn't expect that on this track. But anyway, we move on to lap 63 and we saw Jim Clark there. There was black smoke coming out of, the, out of his engine. He pulls to the side of the track and he is also out of the race so that's three engine failures in one race quite interesting and about four suspension uh, failures lap 65 now and we've just been lapped and here is willie marie is coming into the pits to retire apparently he has a gearbox problem uh, that's quite odd because you don't really have to change gears that much on this track but anyway, we now move on to lap 66 and eventually on to lap 67 to finish the race. We were two laps behind everyone else. Well, behind the leaders anyway. And here are the race results. McLaren wins from trip second, Ellison third, fourth, Lockhart, fifth, Bonnier. And Higgs finishes in sixth. Willie Marys, as I said, managed to post the fastest lap of the race, a 1, point, one minute 1 1.48 second lap. And here are the retirements. Quite a few of them, but not that many. There have there have been two retirements. Uh, however, they did manage to complete 90% of race distance, so they did classify as finishers. So that was the Indianapolis 500. I would say that was quite a good race. I don't see why it would have been a bad race. It's a simple track, although that doesn't say much since we've seen quite a few failed races on this track despite being a very simple track 
But anyway, here are the career statistics and this was Andy's 88th Grand Prix, his best start is from first, has 5 pole positions, has set 15 fastest laps, his best finishes in first, has completed 63 races, 55 of them in the points, has won 33 Grand Prix, 4 at the Indianapolis 500, 6 in Monaco, has 7 championships under his belt, has scored a total of 370 points, has retired 25 times, has experienced 2085 out of 2490 laps, has 6 bronze trophies, 9 silver trophies, 33 gold trophies and as an extension 33 podiums. And here is a quick look at the championship standings, Andy Higgs is still in the lead with 12 points, Brabham is in 2nd, Brooks, Ginther and Von Trips are on 6 points fighting for 4th, the last person to score points is Sterling Moss and at the very bottom of the standings we have Lucien Bianchi. And that is it for the driver standings, quite a tight fight at the top, normally by this point Andy would be leading the championship by a mile so it's quite nice to see that things aren't as clear cut as they have been in the past decades so quite happy about that well because there is a proper battle going on there anyway on to the constructors next here things haven't changed because the indianapolis 500 do doesn't count for the constructors championship so the Standings are the same. Aston Martin are leading with Cooper in second, Yoman Credit Racing and Ferrari fighting for third, Owen Racing are in fifth, Team Lotus in sixth and Rob Walker Racing Team are in seventh. So that was the Indianapolis 500, the final Indianapolis 500 as part of the Formula 1 World Championship and it's going to be a very very long time before we return to this track. Of course when we will return we will race on a completely different track, well for the most part at least, and it will no longer be the Indianapolis 500, it's going to be the United States Grand Prix, but it is going to take a very very long time before we will return to Indianapolis in Indiana. But anyway, our next race is the Dutch Grand Prix at the Zandvoort, a circuit I very much enjoy and I'm hoping to see a good race there as well. In any case, that is the end of the Indianapolis 500, the end of this video. A good race, I would say, a fitting end to a iconic race. Yes, it's for us here in Europe, oval racing might seem quite boring. We, well, we gotten used to Formula 1 and GT racing and touring car racing, and which are held on, on more complex circuits. But we cannot deny that the Indianapolis 500 is a very big racing event in globally it's it's very famous so but then again it doesn't really have a place on the formula one calendar it's well for one it held to a completely different set of rules so i'm really not surprised that they got rid of it in fact i i'm more surprised that it was even a thing but those were the 50s i guess and the 50s were quite weird but anyway, once again, that is the end of this video. Don't forget to vote for next season's team. Link is in the description. I also have a second channel where I will be playing all sorts of different games. At the moment, I'm doing a playthrough of Diablo 2 and IL-2 Sturmavik 1946. So if you're interested in any of those, there will be a link in the description to that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay sharp. <laughs>